Just as with the confidence intervals, we also have a few sample size formulas to choose from. And the trick will be which one to use when. Now, before I get into any of this, <laughs> I do want to mention you don't want to get confused between sample size questions and confidence interval questions. Confidence interval questions will actually say construct the confidence interval. So it'll have words in it that say this, right? So if you see that, that's going to be make a confidence interval, construct a confidence interval, something like that. Down here, you have to look for the question words, but it's going to be how many or what size sample or how big a sample, that kind of thing, is needed to make a confidence interval. So this can get confusing because you'll still see confidence in here, but you've got to look for the question words. Is it asking you to construct the confidence interval? Or is it asking how many would I need in order to construct the confidence interval? Okay, so be careful of that. And don't rely on, oh, if it says formula substitution result, it'll be one or the other because both of these types of questions will ask for that. So that's not a, an accurate measure of what it is. So just be warned. Okay, so now sample size. There are a few options. <laughs> and we have them in our exam notes packet. It's, let's see here. It'd be on, oop, that's confidence intervals for the population proportion. That's, that's, there we go. Sample size. How many? So we have this one, which is p hat times um, q hat z alpha over 2 over the error squared. We've got this one, which is 0.25, and then we've got this one, right? Those are the three that we learned in chapter nine. So I'm actually going to put those in that order right on the sheet. So on the sheet, let me grab it. Okay. So there was P hat times Q hat times, and then it had Z alpha over two over the error squared. Then we also had 0.25 and then Z alpha over two over the error squared. And then we had, and I wanna write this the way I wrote it in there, sorry. I have a tendency to write this one backwards sometimes. It doesn't really affect it, but I don't wanna confuse students. So it's S times Z over the error squared, right? Or Z times S, it, it, it does not matter, but you know, whichever way. So S times Z alpha over two over the error. And that whole thing is squared. Right? So that's a slightly different formula. Okay. Now, which one's which? <laughs> okay. So these two up here are for proportions, right? Both of them. So you're going to be looking for proportions. You're going to be looking for percents. So for both of these, the problem is going to talk about proportions or percents. Now don't get confused about the confidence, right? Ignore the confidence for this because all three of these are going to have a confidence level and a confidence level is always given as a percent, right? So it'll say 99% or 95% or something like that. Okay. So these two are the same thing. Oops. I switched my color there. But the trick is this one is going to have an old value from the past. It'll have a prior estimate, prior meaning from the past, estimate, if I can fit the word estimate in there, right? So that's from the past. It's going to have an old value, old p hat value from the past, from some old study or some old survey or some old, oops, sorry, that's off screen, some old value. Whereas this one will have no guess as to what p hat is from the past, right? It won't exist. That's how you're going to tell the two of them apart, right? So if it's talking about proportions and it has a sample size question, it's going to be one of those two. It's just a question of which one, right? So does it have an old guess? Because if it does, then that's the top one. But if it doesn't have an old guess as to what p hat is or some old survey, then that's this one. Now, both of these came from section 9.4, which is a little bit of a cheat because they really both came from section 9.1. The trick is that 9.1 was already so full and I didn't want to put this in there. So it's 9.1 slash 9.4, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, if you looked in the textbook, it would actually be in section 9.1, but we covered it in section 9.4 because I made up a section 9.4. That's just what I did. Okay. All right. Now, where would I go for it? 
Well, you can see it on that exam notes packet, of course. So if we look at the exam notes packet right here, now what page this is will depend on what semester you're taking this. I mean, right now when I'm doing this, this is page 275, I believe, for the fall of 21, but you could be watching this in a later semester, in which case the page numbers will probably change. But nevertheless, right now it's 275 and it's over here on the left. So it's the top box, but on the left. And this one's the top one on the right, okay? So those are the two um, formulas. And then this one's the second box, right? Or if you will, it's the third formula on the sheet. Okay, so if I go back here, so this top one, again, put on whatever page it is for you and your exam notes packet. For me, it's on page 275, all of these are. And down here, I should have said, this one down here was actually from section 9.2 but I covered in section 9.4. So it's really 9.2. I'm going to put that in parentheses because that's what it really is. Like if you physically opened up the book, that's where it would be. But again, I thought those sections were too full as it was. So I didn't want to add into that. All right. So where are they? So this is the top left formula. So this is on the top left, right? That's that formula. And this one is on the top and it's on the right. I don't know why I put semicolons there, <laughs> just to make our lives more difficult because we're gonna have to write over them. And then this one is the second box, right? This is the second formula, second box. It's the third formula on that page, but right, it's the second box. Now, what about this formula down here, right? How is that different from these two? So these two are about proportions. This is really unique. This is the only one that's dealing with the mean. So it's going to deal with mean, also known as the average. And you have to be given the standard deviation. That's key. So if you see standard deviation anywhere in the problem, this is the only one of these that has a standard deviation. It's right there. S. S is the standard deviation. So if you see standard deviation, that is totally this one, right? This is the S. Here, let me highlight it right there, right? So if you see S in the problem, that's the one you're working with. Okay, now you'll notice that all of these formulas had the same critical values. And the critical value was Z through the whole thing, Z alpha over two. So Z alpha over two for every last one of them, right? It didn't matter. And remember to get Z alpha over two, um, it's in the instructions on page, well, again, for me, it's page 272. So it's in your yellow packet, your exam notes packet. So I don't know if it'll be yellow for the semester you take it, um, but for me, it's yellow. It's confidence right here, critical Z values right there. So those are the instructions. So for me, it's page 272 in my appendix A. So I, I don't know for sure where it will be for you, but that's where it is for me. So I could see C page, and again, fill in your page, but for me, it's 272 for instructions on how to find that. Next. All of these formulas always round up, no matter what, right? To the nearest whole number. Okay. So even if it comes out as, you know, 22.03, you will round up to 23. You will. So you must round up no matter what. That's just the nature of the beast with these questions. All right. In proportion problems, ah, so in proportion problems, it's really common for the error to be given as a percentage. So they'll say, um, and <laughs> while I'm at it, the key word for error is within. They'll say, we want to be within 3%. Okay, well, within 3%, right? So if they give you a percentage error, you're going to change it to a decimal. That is super key. A lot of students won't do that. So let me, let me give you a quick example over here. So if example says within, oops, within uh, 3%, then the error you're going to use is 0 0.03. And there's a little example for you. Oops, sorry, it's a little moved it. All right, so if they say within 3%, quote unquote, in the problem, you will make that the error is 0.03 for that formula, 
right here. So when you have that error in that formula, that you'd make it a decimal. Now that is not true for this, actually, this is the one I just pointed to. Um, so these two, usually they give it to you as a percentage, right? So they'll say within 3%. This one, you go with whatever they say, because it'll be dollars, it'll be inches, it'll be whatever. So it's important to note that this is only for the first two. This is only for the proportion ones, which are the first two formulas that I did in blue and pink. So there's those ones. This is not for the third formula. So not which I should do in green there. I can color code it, not formula number three, right? Formula number three, you go with whatever they gave you. So whatever they say in the problem, that's what you use. But if they give it to you as a percentage, be warned to change it to a decimal. All right. Then I also mentioned this earlier, but I will say it again. Beware confidence will appear in all of these problems. They're gonna say confidence. Confidence has to come somewhere because confidence is used to find that Z alpha over two critical value. So you're gonna need confidence, ah, but you have to look for the question words, right? How many, what sample size, that kind of, and those are the two most common examples, there are others, but if it's asking for those things, then it's a sample size question. If it asks you to construct that confidence interval, that's the previous page with the, with the confidence interval formulas. But it's really key that you read these problems very carefully. Find the question words, use highlighters, use colored markers. I certainly do, right? To break down the problems and figure out what's being asked for, what's the information I know, what do I have to find? All right, last but not least, we have our, our favorites, some relationships going on between error and sample size. Okay, and we already learned these before, but we're gonna say them again, right? Which is that if the error goes up, then the sample size goes down, right? That's that relationship. We saw it in the previous page as well, right? Error and sample size are on a teeter-totter. They have an inverse relationship. That's what I mean by when I say vice versa. Okay. So if error goes up, n goes down and vice versa, right? They have an indirect relationship or an inverse relationship. Okay, so then confidence level. So C level, keep in mind, all of these problems are gonna say C level. Everything from chapter nine is gonna say C level somewhere, right? So a C level alone doesn't mean that you're doing a confidence interval. So a C level and saying the words construct a confidence interval, that means you're going to be doing a confidence interval. A confidence given and a sample size question is going to be one of these. So you really have to analyze these problems. All right, back to what I was saying. A confidence goes up, then N goes up. Right, those go together. Or you could do it in reverse and you could say, you know, as confidence goes down, N goes down, right? And if you want this one in reverse, I can say, if you want to see what vice versa looks like, if error goes down, N goes up. That's that one, right? See, that's the tricky one. This is the one that's backwards. This is the one you got to watch out for because it's the one that has that indirect relationship. Whereas these other two, if standard deviation, S, that's what standard deviation is, right? That's S. If standard deviation goes up, N goes up. And again, if you want to see it, if standard deviation goes down, n goes down. So these work just like you think they're going to with no problem. It's this one that you got to watch out for, right? If the error goes down, the n goes up. That's an indirect relationship. It's an inverse relationship. And that's the one you got to keep track of. One other thing to keep in mind is that your confidence can never be 100%. Um, we'll learn why a little bit more in chapter 10, but I'll just make a note right here at the bottom. Your confidence level can go high, but can never be 100%. Right? We're never 100% confident because 100% confident would mean we actually know the values for the whole population. So this would mean that we somehow... Um, this would imply that we surveyed the whole population or sampled the whole population, which generally is 
impossible <laughs> population. It, it's possible if you have a very small population, but in general, it's not what we're working with. And there are other reasons why that's not possible, but you'll learn those in chapter 10. All right, I hope that helps. And those two flowcharts will really help you analyze what you're doing and when to use which formula.